Configuring Pressure Network Label Styles Here you will learn how to navigate and configure your label styles for pressure pipes, fittings, and appurtenances. Okay, so we'll continue with the same drawing we had in our previous demonstration. As you can see, we already have our existing conditions model referenced into our current working drawing. We also have defined the location of where we'll be referencing our pressure network catalog from. In this case, we're going to just use the standard push-on Civil 3D out-of-the-box pressure network catalog. Additionally, we have set up custom pressure network parts list in our previous demonstration along with some basic view styles that will be applied to each of our pressure pipes, fittings, and appurtenances. Essentially we're all set up at this point to start designing and laying out our pressure network. Please note that configuring your pressure network label styles can be done later on after you start laying out your design if you'd prefer. But as a personal preference I like to knock out as much as I can during the setup process so all I have to focus on down the road is the design itself. That being said, let's go to our home ribbon and select the tool space icon. This will bring up a box that will allow us to define, modify, and update various settings within our drawing. In this demonstration we're going to go ahead and set up or configure our pressure network label styles. To do so, we'll click on the settings tab in our tool space, scroll down to pressure pipe, Let's click on the plus sign next to pressure pipe to expand the options, then click on the plus sign next to label styles. As you can see, we have three different types of label styles that could be applied to our pressure pipe networks. These are plan and profile, crossing section, and crossing profile. So if you go ahead and expand these, you'll see that there are already a few predefined label styles that come with Civil 3D. If you plan on setting up template files, I would suggest creating a new label style for your pressure networks that could be incorporated into your standard template file at a later date. So to create a new pressure pipe label style for plan and profile, we'll simply right click on plan and profile and select new. Once the dialog box pops up, we'll go ahead and give it a logical name in the information tab. In this case, I'm just going to call it demonstration. If we go to the General tab, we can now define properties to the label as a whole. We will identify the label properties. Visibility can be set to true or false, which essentially means it's either turned on or off. Now if I change it to false, you'll notice that the label disappears in the preview on the right side. Let's keep it set to true for now. Moving on to the Behavior section, we have Orientation Reference which you can change from orienting the label along the object, the current view rotation, or even world coordinate system. You'll notice that if you change the orientation reference to view or world coordinate system, the forced insertion and forced inside curve options are grayed out. Let's change it back to object, and then change the forced insertion to bottom to see the differences in the preview. Next we have plan readability, which essentially defines at which view rotation angle your label will flip such that your label is always set to be read right side up in your final plan and profile sheet setups. Next we'll move on to the layout tab. Here you will define exactly what you want your label to say. If you aren't familiar with this step, I would strongly recommend that you review Pluralsight's training course that reviews everything about styles. There's a ton of stuff you could build into these labels, which this course will not go over. In any event, let's go ahead and set up a basic pressure pipe label for this exercise. We want to make sure that we have the text component for our labels, which you can see here. If you click the down arrow and the icon next to the component name, you could see that we can certainly build or add additional components into our label. For this particular instance, we're only going to need to concern ourselves with the text though. Again, we have a visibility option. Since we want to see the label, we'll want to keep it set to true. Anchor component and anchor point can be changed, which will change the label attachment to your object. We're just going to leave these settings as is for now though. Under text, we have a contents option. 
If you click on the ellipsis icon in the contents section, another dialog box pops up. Let's go ahead and delete the contents in here and change it to read the diameter size, material, 2D length, and slope. We'll click OK and accept the remaining defaults as are. If we scroll down, you can see all the various settings we can apply for the annotation, along with applying a border with background mask if we choose. Moving on to the Drag State tab, again we have a multitude of settings we can define. In this case, the only default setting we'll change at this time is under the Drag State Components category. We're going to change the display from Stack Text to As Composed. By changing this setting to As Composed, we're essentially telling it to use all the settings we previously defined in the Layout tab. Okay, so moving on to the Summary tab, we could see all possible settings that could be applied to one particular label style. If I were to create additional components in the Layout tab, whether it be another text component, a line, block, flow direction arrow, or reference text, you would see each component listed here as well. In this example, however, we only set up one component, which was text. We also have detailed information about who created and modified the style last and when. We also have the overall label settings, behavior, plan readability, leader, and drag state components that can be seen and or modified here. Now that we have our label set up, let's go ahead and just click the OK button and move on to setting up additional label styles. So going back to our prospector, with our settings tab selected, we'll scroll down to pressure pipe, label styles, and then right click on cross section and select new. Once the dialog box pops up, we'll go ahead and give it a logical name in this information tab. In this case, we're just going to call it demonstration to keep things consistent. If we go to the general tab, we can define properties to the label as a whole just as we did before. As was the case with our previous label style, we will identify the label properties and visibility here. We'll keep the behavior settings set to object and then change the forced insertion to bottom to see the difference in the preview. We'll keep the plan readability settings as are as well. Next, we'll move on to the layout tab. Here you will define exactly what you want your label to say. We want to make sure that we have the text component for our labels which you can see here. Again, we have a visibility option. Since we want to see the label, we'll obviously keep it set to true, along with the default anchor component and anchor point settings. Under text, we have a contents option. If you click on the ellipsis icon in the contents section, another dialog box pops up again. Let's go ahead and delete the contents in here and change it to read the diameter size We'll click OK and accept the remaining defaults as is. If we scroll down, we have those same additional settings that can be applied to the annotation, along with the border and background mask. Moving on to the Drag State tab, again, we have a multitude of settings here that we can define. In this case, the only default setting we're going to change is under the Drag State Components category. We're going to change the display from Stack Text to As Composed. Moving on to the Summary tab, we can then see all the possible settings that could be applied to this particular label style. Let's just click the OK button and move on to setting up our Crossing Profile label now. So going back to our Prospector, with our Settings tab selected, we'll scroll down to the Pressure Pipe, Label Styles, and then right click on Crossing Profile and select New. Once the dialog box pops up, we'll go ahead and give it a logical name. Again, we're just going to keep it consistent and call it Demonstration. Moving on to the General tab, again, we can define the properties to the label as a whole. We'll keep the behavior settings set to Object and then change the forced insertion to Bottom to see the difference in the preview. We'll keep the Play and Readability settings as are as well. Next, we'll move on to the Layout tab. Under Text, we have a Contents option. If we select that ellipsis icon again, 
we get another dialog box. Let's go ahead and delete the contents in here and change it to read the diameter size and crossing station only. We'll click OK and accept the remaining defaults as is. And then we'll move on to the drag state tab. Let's change this from stack text to as composed. Moving on to the summary tab, we've got the same information as before. Let's go ahead and just click OK. So let's move on to setting up our fitting label styles. Going back to our prospector and our settings tab selected, we'll scroll down to fitting, label styles, then right click on label styles and select new. Let's go ahead and call this one demonstration. Moving on to the general tab, we've got very similar options. Just going to leave everything as default right now. Next, we'll move on to the layout tab. If we go down on the text contents option, we'll click on the ellipsis icon to get another dialog box. Let's go ahead and delete the contents in here and change it to read uh, the name and station only. And we'll click OK and accept the remaining defaults as is. Moving on to the Drag State tab, let's go ahead and change the Drag State components from Stack Text to As Composed. Moving on to the Summary tab, we've got all the details about this label we just created. Let's go ahead and just click OK. And then finally we'll move on to setting up our Appurtenance label style. So going back to our Prospector, with our Settings tab selected, We'll scroll down to Appurtenance, Label Styles, right click on that and select New. Let's go ahead and call this demonstration as well. If we click on the General tab you can see that we have all the same options available. Let's just leave everything as default for now. Next we'll move on to the Layout tab. Let's click on the Ellipsis icon under text, select everything in this dialog box and delete it. And then we'll change it to read just the name and station only. Moving on to the drag state tab, again we're going to change the display from stack text to as composed. Moving on to the summary tab, same stuff we've seen before. So let's just go ahead and click OK. So now at this point, you're all set up to display your pressure network design labels, how you intend to show them in your plan, profile, and section views within your drawing set.